Hello, this is Vampire here to talk again about the uh, Knife for Street. I just recently revisited this system and I uploaded a video for you guys the other day. And uh, yeah, I, I want to talk about some details here. So this is the um, one of the original photos that I did for, for a logo. And you can see I'm holding the uh, the Walmart knife even back then. And this one here, this is the cover for my ebook that I pub self published in back in 2007. And here again, once again, I'm I'm holding the uh, the Walmart knife um, as a palm stick. So that was a step four out of the five steps, which I called the five points. Right. So some of you have said that you felt like. Um, you might think that this system is a little bit too violent, right? And you have to understand that when I created the system back in 2006, I was living in bad neighborhoods. So it was designed for those neighborhoods, okay? It was designed for that kind of environment. And like, for instance, today... Where I live today is is much much nicer. It's I don't have to worry the way that I did when I lived in those places. So, you know what you can do is you can substitute instead of um, carrying a folding knife, you could substitute that with a marker or a flashlight. Okay, like one of those pocket flashlights. So you could substitute with either one of those. I think are are really good choices but you could still use the K4S system. So if you if you think that it's too much, do that instead and still practice, still practice this. Um, now, for those people that feel like this is not violent enough, because you're probably coming from the point of view that, that you're going, oh, you're trying to be legal, so you're holding back, and that's why you're using the folding knife in the closed position, you're not going lethal force right away and, and you're not doing like a lot of lethal techniques. You think that I'm holding back and the answer is no. Okay, I don't want to hold back. I want to do the best that I can in order to survive. So this has nothing to do with holding back. Yes, of course I want to be legal because I, I don't want to be thrown in jail and I don't want to be wrong. I, I don't want to make the wrong move and uh, kill somebody when I shouldn't have. I definitely don't want that on my consciousness or on my hands. For sure, I don't want that. So um, it has nothing to do with holding back because I don't want to be too violent. What it has to do, everything is about the reason. What are you trying to do here? You know, and in my case, this is about survival. I want to survive. It has nothing to do with, I want to be as violent as possible and I want to hurt the person as much as I can. I want them to regret it. I don't, I don't want them to ever mess with me again. I want to teach them a lesson or I want to put them in the hospital. I want to take them out of commission completely. I want to take their life. That is not my concern. Okay. I, I am not thinking about that at all. I'm going to give 110% towards my own survival. So no, I am not holding back. And violence, if it becomes violent or if I cut the person in any way, that was a side effect. It was situational. That's all it was. Okay, so I, I want to make that clear. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you what, when you study Filipino martial arts, this is something that... I, I really learned because I had seen people were talking about, you know, these vicious styles, knife combat styles, and these are the best in the market today, right? So I looked at some of those, right? Of course, I wanted to see what other people were coming up with. So I, I looked at them and you know what? There was nothing, I will tell you this, nothing that I saw, I felt like, could cover or match the original Filipino martial arts that was used on the battlefield. Like, like, look at this right here. I'm using double knives. Yes, they're training knives, but double knives, both arms. You want to get violent? 
this is about as violent as you get. Now, can I get more violent? Yeah, I could substitute these double knives with double machetes. If you want to see violence, you know, it. I'm sorry, folks. It doesn't get much nastier than that. Or I could have a firearm in one hand, so I could have a handgun in one hand, and I could have a blade in the other, or I could have two firearms, you know, and if I was just intent on just going to town on someone, yeah, it's going to be ultra violent. So to me, the traditional Filipino martial arts has that covered. It's like, you want to get violent? We could already do that. That's level one, really. That's level one. But that's not the goal here, you know. It's, it's about survival and protecting myself. So the purpose is totally different. So now the question is, and, and okay, so here I am. You know, this, this is once again a photo from uh, back then, 2006 or 2007. And uh, you can see I'm carrying that Walmart knife in, in the front. It's the right pocket, but um, I think the photo is backwards. So this is my right side. Or I, maybe I put it on this side f for the sake of uh, just taking the photo. I'm, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, this, this, is, this is the way that I recommend it to you guys. For, for carrying. And then here is me demonstrating the battering ram technique. So, oh, you see what you're seeing there is the same Walmart knife, but I didn't get that one at Walmart. There's, there's ones that I did get from Walmart because I, I bought several of these knives, but this one didn't come from Walmart, but it was the exact same design. The only difference was it had a um, uh, you can see the color is a little bit different there. It, it had a, uh, a piece that was put in that, that was in a different color, that, that white um, inside piece on, on the handle. But other than that, it was exactly the same. So here we go. This is the battering ram technique that, that I'm showing. And so you would take it out of your pocket and boom, once again, this is palm stick techniques using it closed and this is how I would get into um, uh, close range the clinch area and try to solve the situation try try to fix the the problem diffuse it we you know whatever and uh, here we go back back to this again so um, the question here would be when do you go from palm stick to blade right so out of the five points step four was palm stick tactics and then step five was deploying the blade so how how do i know when to go there and for a lot of people they probably think okay so it's when i make that decision all right and and this is what i want to make very very clear for you guys so people go i want to make that decision when i feel that it's necessary i will make that decision and i will go to live blade i will deploy the blade and i'll use the blade right and i want you guys to to know think of what you're saying you're going to make a decision under pressure at the moment you may not even have seconds you may not even have the luxury of, of time there, not even a few seconds, okay? So under that, you have to make a life, potentially life-altering decision, literally. You might take their life. You might end up taking their life if you use the blade. So you are going to make that decision right then and there under that kind of pressure. And, and you may not be in the right frame of mind. You might be upset. You might be angry. You might be freaked out. You might be... Um, uh, confused so it's a bad idea is what I'm trying <laughs> what I'm trying to say so then what I'm saying to you guys in my system is I am NOT making a decision the system already does that for me so I'm really not making that decision I'm using the palm stick so like I said I'm, I'm doing this boom right I'm using the palm stick for self-defense and if this does not take care of the situation, so I do this and I try to run away and it doesn't take care of the situation, they're continuing to attack me or I, I'm running away and they're pursuing me or something like that, then, then the blade will come out. 
So that is, the situation is telling me what to do. I don't have to think. I don't have to think. And once again, it has nothing to do with violence. It has nothing to do with, oh, I want to cut him in the throat. I want to take out his eyeball. I want to cut his jugular. It has nothing to do with any of those kinds of messed up moves. I'm going to puncture his lung. I'm going to take out his kidneys. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about my survival. Okay, so I want to make that very, very clear to you guys. The goal is I want to survive, and this is what I used back then, and I survived. I didn't go to prison. I was able to avoid hurting people unnecessarily. I mean, it, it worked great, and that's why I was like, I need to share this. And, and there's a lot of uh, misconception today where people are like, defensive moves don't work. And it, it's like, no, that's not true, you know. So uh, just wanted to make this very clear for you guys. That's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.